thought I would check in and do a little video. We are still pretty locked down here. And as you can see, I am turning into a bit of a 70s reject. That's right. And I kind of like it. Um, you know, there's like one record shop open doing curbside and some food stuff. But people were really out this weekend enjoying the weather. It was super nice. 70 and sunny. Uh, it's getting tougher and tougher to just go to work and then come home, you know. So I've been noticing people outside. <sighs> that said, something happened to me this week that has never happened before. I posted last week's video and in the comments, a gentleman named Richard said, Hey, Bob, I want to send you a record. VCLT, that's right. Holy smokes. Um, and I said, all right, all right, all right. And lo and behold, a few days later, Richard is a very fast shipper, a package arrived for me, and uh, I, it, it was incredible. There were several records in there, and I'm going to show them right now. Coming in hot. Bam, Black Sabbath. Born Again, this is a post Ozzy, post Dio. This is the last Sabbath record before the big hiatus. Um, Ian Gillen on vocals from the Deep Purple fame, that's right. And, um, you know, he's kind of a mix between like a Robert Plant and Dio and kind of a Deep Purple vibe obviously going on. And uh, This is an interesting record. Tony Iommi with a much kind of brighter, more kind of 80s metal sound, if you will. Um, you know, scary artwork on the cover of this kind of demon baby. Um, this is on a red vertigo from Germany. This is really cool. Thank you so much. He also sent this. Boom, Jack White's Lazaretto. This is the Ultra LP. This is the one that has the tracks on the labels. So if you have an automatic tone arm, you probably won't get to hear those. That said, you know, Jack White, he he's, you know, when he is on, he is on. And um, he's usually good for a couple really awesome tracks. And on this one, uh, you get Lazaretto, you get Highball Stepper. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, record, you know, he's got like all these Nashville cats on it and they're playing fiddles and all kinds of things. Um, here's the back here. Yep. Really cool. Really, really cool. Awesome artwork. You know, Jack White, a steward of all things vinyl, has his own record label, Third Man Records. Really cool. But, so the way that this really started was I had mentioned that I wanted this next record and Richard heard me say it obviously and and had more than one and thought he would send it to me i was looking at the mofi um the recent mofi copy that's out and some originals but was you know being indecisive and not pulling the trigger so he sent me this bam miles davis's sorcerer now, this is big. Look how cool this is. Yes. This is a Vinyl Me Please edition of the record. Tip on jacket. Uh, pink vinyl. Uh, you know, it's it was uh, cut from the original master tapes. And, you know, it sounds really awesome. This is a spectacular gift to receive. Thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate that. Uh, look at this. This is this looks beautiful, right? I was shocked at how good it sounded. You know, I'd never really uh, done any of the Vinyl Me Please stuff, and uh, you know, I get you know ads for it constantly on Facebook and other social media and stuff like that, and I've just mostly ignored it. <laughs> but uh, that really made me think twice about that stuff so uh, really interesting Miles Davis is sorcerer the uh, yeah very nice very nice but he also sent me one last thing this boom a seven inch this is Grateful Dead these are a couple tracks off blues for Allah 
Um, help on the way and Franklin's Tower. Yeah, really cool on a yellow, yellow vinyl. Really cool. And here's the deal. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, yeah, I want to hear this. And I was, uh, I listened to it, and it's got, the, it's kind of some weird versions of the tunes, really. When you get so accustomed to hearing uh, different live renditions of the songs, and then you hear these ones off the records, it's like, what? <laughs> but um, when I went to put this away in, a, in 45 boxes, if you will, I thought, I'm going to grab a handful of uh, 7 inches and give them a spin. So I've been listening to a lot of 45s this week. Um, thought I'd talk about some of those for a second. Listen to this one. Shook me all night long uh, and have a drink on me. ACDC is <laughs> really cool. Uh, you know, what can you say about ACDC that hasn't already been said? Other than they are incredible band very very consistent uh check this out this is cool trash men uh king of surf and the surfing bird yeah you know i used to have a buddy who would who i worked with and he would call and if you didn't answer you know back in the day everybody had like an answering machine and he would just play super long bird like a 20 like a 12 minute long version of the surfing bird uh, onto your answering machine if you didn't answer and you just push the uh, play button and all of a sudden you'd just be hearing the bird 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 yeah that bird is nowhere <laughs> what is going on <laughs> i i love that um <laughs> all right next uh, james brown at the organ yeah we all know this uh, try me. Uh, Papa's got a, a brand new bag, if you will. Kind of on this. Yeah. Cool. James Brown. You know, a lot of people don't know. He's excellent organ player. Excellent organ player. Uh, pulled this one out. Uh, Jolene. Uh, Dolly Parton. Yeah. Uh, what's the B side here? Um, my Tennessee Mountain Home. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't know how Dolly does it. She plays that guitar with those huge long fingernails. It's and everybody knows Jolene. It's it's probably maybe her most famous tune. I remember watching Nine to Five back in the day and you know Dolly Parton was a big star for a long time. Here's a cool one. Um Dusty Springfield, son of a preacher man. If you don't have Dusty in Memphis. This is not a bad way to go. This is a beautiful, very clean copy of it. Uh, Just a Little Lovin' is on the B-side, but you know, Son of a Preacher Man is definitely the best song on that record, and uh, if you just want that tune, maybe go this way. Uh, save a little money. That's a, Dusty in Memphis is an expensive record. Um, here's a cool one. Led Zeppelin, immigrant song, right? You know what that means. Hey, hey, what can I do is on the B side. And, you know, this doesn't appear, hey, hey, what can I do does not appear on any of the Led Zeppelin records, full length LPs. It only exists in this manner, except it was included, you know, that box set with the, um, what was it, the crop circle box set? It had, um, it was on there. You know, that's a long time radio jam. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I remember hearing that and then trying to find it, like, what record is this on? And, and then, you know, of course that leads to, it's not on any record, so. I finally found that. Really exciting. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this this kind of uh, goes into like what some other VC members are doing right now. Run DMC. I'm not going out like that. Also, uh, 
how'd you do it, D? Now, Run DMC, you know, for me is basically like ground zero of hip hop from for me, for me personally, you know. Um, I remember when all this stuff came out, I probably heard Run DMC. I mean, obviously, we all heard like Sugar Hill Gang and stuff like that, that which was really cool when it came out, and it was obviously a novel thing that was happening. But once LL and Run DMC and the Beasties hit, uh, it was like full on, like you know, fat boys and all that stuff. And, you know, these dudes had the most, uh, I would say, stylized image of the whole group because, you know, they're, they're in all black. They got the leather jackets. They got the Adidas. They got the chains, the hats. They got everything going on. And it was just like the personification of the movement at the time. And I just love the, you know, they had the big glasses and stuff and I just loved everything that Run DMC was doing and then when the Aerosmith track hits when Walk This Way happens with them it's just phew. that said Raisin Hell is the one of the most epic records and you know everything they do is pretty dope uh, Run DMC yeah, one of my favorite hip hop groups from the 80s that said, there was somebody else that when we got turned on to, we <laughs> could not get enough of it, okay? Never talked about hardly, but really should be talked about, right? Boom. Slick Rick. And that's right. On Def Jam Recordings. The, in particular, there was this tune called Children's Story. You're not going to be able to see that. But children's story and it's where you know slick rick has a rap about a young kid that gets involved in the the wrong side of things the point is is this reminds me of a story <laughs> so we had this on cassette of course and um at the time that this was going on my brother had a uh, 1972 Pontiac Le Mans, which, if you don't know this car, it looks just like a GTO from the same era. It's very, very similar uh, to to the to the Goat, to the GTO, the Pontiac GTO, and his was like a kind of a reddish, kind of purplish looking color. 455 big block, two speed a power glide transmission right bench seats sometimes uh, i cannot remember he had some type of tape deck in there that was that was referred to as a flat face tape deck two six by nines with a some type of booster that was mounted underneath the dash and we would just ride around in the car listening to these early hip-hop um albums if you will and one day it was me and him and my cousin and cousin Charlie, what's up? And we're just barreling down the road in this car. And okay, here's the thing. If you <laughs> if in the, in those days you could do a lot of things to old cars that you really can't do to new cars these days. So you could do things like neutral dropping where you put the car in neutral and push the gas and rev the motor up and then shove it into gear and it would like burn out and take off and stuff. <laughs> it's a really abusive thing to do to your car. But, you know, you could do things like that and get a variety of effects. So <clears throat> we here we are, you know, you know, rolling down the road at, say, 40 miles per hour. And there's a thing that you can do where you... Put the car into low gear, okay, and that's and and you know you get the RPMs re up really high, right? In low gear, and then you pop it back up into drive, and you know you get a variety of effects. It's terrible on your transmission, but it can, you know, it's a pretty fun thing to do back then. So we're going down the road and. 
we're already probably going way too fast to be doing a maneuver like this and you know children's stories on the radio we're having a good time and <clears throat> my brother says I'm gonna drop it down and I'm, and I've, I'm of course I'm like don't do that you know and he's like I'm doing it dude and boom drops it down into low punches the gas bang! and as he goes to put the car into drive you know what's right next to one pass drive reverse and he shoves the gear shifter up boom and it flips right into reverse and the car starts going and we're cooking we're probably going 65 and the car just starts to slow down and we pull over to the side of the road and you know this is a cool car at the time and <laughs> Chris puts his head on the steering wheel and here Slick Rick is coming out of the stereo <laughs> and he reaches over and turns it off and just sits there quietly and turns you know car turns the car off and we waited for about no, a minute or so and he turns it back on puts it into gear and it took off but long story short it did blow the rear main sill I think and some other it, it did some it, some damage to that car that day he eventually sold the car not long after that and got a like a 69 Nova or something like that but you know these tunes right here these tunes that we show on the VC are always attached to some crazy memories of uh, that happened in our lives. So that is my <laughs> slick Rick story. Uh, also, been listening to this. Boom, uh, the Beastie Boys, the end sound from way out. Yeah, you know this is the instrumental record that they. It's like a. Uh, all the instrumental tunes off the records and compiled onto one record. I love this thing. This it sounds good. It's on Grand Royal. It's so funky. Those guys, MCA, a genius, the the undisputed leader of the Beasties, and uh, man, rest in peace, MCA. I miss that guy. Um, but. Yeah, Groove Holmes and Ricky Steam, Bobo in the Corner. This, I mean, this is a dope record. If you don't have this, you got to get it. All the Beastie Boys records are awesome records. Um, I don't have a whole lot of them. I had that stuff on tape and CD, and I'm trying to get ill communication. I do have license to ill, but I would love to have uh, Check Your Head and, and Paul's Boutique. Uh... Yeah, I just love all the Beastie Boys records. I have a lot of fond memories of the Beastie Boys from the 90s and stuff. And yeah, it's it's something that I, that I really miss. Uh, one last thing before I go. I did uh, a little mod on my record shelves. Uh, let's move up. I did this little like um, pool noodle mod, right? You can't really see that. Uh, you see it back there? It's purple. Yeah, and what it does is it keep you can push, you put the pool noodle at the back of the um, cube, and you can push the records to where they're all flat. Now, I got these pool noodles. It's like a two-inch diameter pool noodle for like a dollar, you know, at the grocery store of all places, and um, you know, you just cut them. A, to a little bit long, just a tad longer than the cube to where it kind of wedged in there. You shove it to the back and then, boom, you can have all your records with a kind of a backstop because you know these uh, Ikea calyxes don't come with back on them. Really a cool thing to do and, um, you know, it really makes the record shelf look a little bit different. That said, uh, yep, still been working on the record. 
Condors in the system. Uh, if you haven't heard our music, check us out on all streaming platforms, including here on YouTube. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're working on a record. It's called Nothing Matters, Everything Matters. All the guitars are done. Uh, we're working on the bass right now. Uh, I'll be putting out a video about that later this week. And then all that's left is to do a little bit of singing, and we will go into mixing and mastering. Yeah. So we'll be finishing up this project, and probably right at, you know, around the end of the quarantine when everything's opening up we'll have uh, you know a new project and uh, we'll be trying to figure out a way to get it put on vinyl <laughs> and uh, playing some shows and stuff so it'll be really exciting uh, but anyhow thanks again to Richard for the VCLT that's amazing um, thanks again to everybody for watching the videos and Hope you're all staying healthy, keeping a positive attitude. We're going to come out of this, and, and everything's going to be fine, I think. Um, you know, I've found that you know, everybody gets wrapped up in all this uh, political, governmental kind of talk and stuff. And you know what? Guys like me, the government doesn't really affect what I do very much. <laughs> no matter who's the president or whatever, um, my life seems to just keep going on. So... Uh, I keep the ball in my court and moving ahead until we until we meet again. That's right. Bob out.